Thank yeah. you. Okay, so first I'd like to talk about the man of God. Yeah. That film. Um, what was it about uh, Yelena that, that you felt comfortable with her to be able to do this? Film? Well, I mean, I'm a pretty instinctive person, you know. I mean, I could, I could read people very well. And when I heard about the project, I went, well, I did a religious movie before with Liliana Cavani, who's a great director. Unfortunately, because of the subject matter, it was only really shown in Italy. So, but that didn't matter. I, I, I have an affinity for pictures that are about uh, saints. And what I'd heard about Elena was very good, but I don't go by that. It's when I met her and I looked at her in the eyes and she spoke very little, I spoke very little, but we understood each other right away. I knew what she wanted and she knew what I wanted. Right. She'd and she gave me that. She'd seen you in a previous film and uh, and that's where she got inspired to, uh, to bring you on board. Right. Um, so the film now has broken a lot of box office records over in the European market. And people have, even young people are watching it. And they're watching it multiple times. Well, that surprises me. Well, yeah, I watched it the last couple of days and it was yeah. very motivating. I don't think 10 people saw Francesco. Well, this one is doing very, very well. well what, what do you think about the need for a, a, a faith-based film that brings love and, and, and forgiveness into it? I think, to be really honest with you, you should ask Mel Gibson that question. I think he could answer it a lot better than I could. Because I can't, I don't want to give you, I don't want to generalize it. Because it's, it's a, uh, the country now is so divided and there's so much anger and hate and pure hatred due to Trump that it's, you know, you know, there, there's, there's, I'm getting ready to buy a house in New York, but there's a big side of me that, I don't know how much I like this country anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in the general market that people are looking for films like this that are less about hate. No, I think, I think they're looking for escapism movies like The Fast and the Furious because it just, they just want to go and not think about what's going on in the world. There's fires burning all over the place. They got global warming. They, uh, certain wildlife are becoming extinct. Uh, stuff in the, in the rainforest. Uh, the polar bears aren't getting enough ice or in in Alaska you know um, the water is rising there, there's so much of that going on that that's what's got to be important not a movie I think you know maybe some sort of film that would inspire the younger generation because this generation has already fucked everything up maybe to make the world a, a healthier, cleaner, safer, more good place to live in. How about the morality of the film, the morality message? Do you think that's good as, as being a Catholic to try to explain? I didn't, think, I didn't think about it that way at all. Because, you know, I have a heavy load just dealing with my own morality or Dima, who I love very much, or my animals, you know, I, I don't, I, I can't like, it's not a, I, don't, I can't generalize the uh, morality of much. Because I can't fix nothing. Did you want to jump in? No. no. Um, so as a Roman Catholic and you worked on a film about a Greek Orthodox church, did you spend any time getting involved in, in the differences? No, I mean, it would be no difference if uh, I was playing a, a Jewish person, a person of faith, uh, or if I was playing a Muslim. 
you know. Mm -hmm. To me, there's one God, there's one paradise, there's what, heaven, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we all kind of believe in the, in the big picture, the same thing in a way, those who believe. What motivated you to be in the movie then? Uh, what I heard about Elena and the fact that uh, it seemed like a challenging role to pull off. Your faith didn't come involved with it or about the story inside? Yeah, my, my relationship with St. Jude, uh, it, you know, I do believe in miracles and I do, I do believe that there is certain chosen people that perhaps uh, have a particular relationship with, with God. I know that on two different occasions, when I was in very, very bad shape, like suicidal shape, I went to Lourdes and I waited in line for four hours like everybody else and I went twice and I saw all the wheelchairs and the crutches and everything hanging on this wire. It's been there for a couple hundred years and I know that each time that I went to Lourdes, what I prayed for was answered. It took a couple of weeks, but it was answered. So it was, it was for me, it was well worth the trip. And it's insane when you go there, there's thousands of people for thousands of different reasons of their own that are, that are going there to ask for help, for a miracle or help. Um. What, uh, what connects you with the Archangel Michael? Michael the Archangel. Michael the Archangel. Michael the Archangel. I would say probably the fact that he's the warrior saint. He, he's the saint that... Uh, do you say, Michael? Yeah. Uh, I just learned the prayer, and it talks about you know, uh, please keep me away from the snarls of the devil and uh, please, uh, please God, I promise to believe in you, St. Michael, uh, uh, that, uh, and I ask you to pray for me, for God to bless me and to get over whatever my, whatever my devils or demons within me or around me. He's just saying I pray to every night. Does it help you? It helps me, yes. Uh, there's about five prayers that I say every night and then uh, there's always, you know, something will hit me and I'll think, oh, I got to learn that prayer too. Okay. And uh, you know, saying the rosary helps me a lot. Uh, I mean, I probably do it an average of three times a day. You know, most people who say Mickey Rourke, you wouldn't think about, he says the rosary three times a day, right? But maybe that's why I'm still here. That's good. Uh, final question for me. Um, I'll give you one example. My priest, Father Peter, Peter, his name was Father Peter Colapietro. And he said to me one time, you can't come to the church or you can't talk with God when the building's on fire. You got to have that relationship with God before the building's on fire. Mm -hmm. So that sums it up. One uh, final question for me then. Um, when you think about your role as the paralyzed man and knowing all the conflicts and everything that you go into it and then the miracle happens, what do you think the paralyzed man does after that? How does he, does he live a different life? Does he? I think he's walking and he's going home to see the ones he loves and they're going to be very happy to see him walking. That's it. 
no pot of gold. The pot of gold is that he can get out of bed and walk. So it was a, a miracle. Do you think miracles like that happen every day and we just sometimes don't see it? There's a book I'm reading called Miracles Do Happen. And um, I do believe in miracles. I believe it was a miracle that my brother lived, got to live 30 years longer than they thought. I think it's a miracle that I didn't spend my whole life in jail. But because along the way, you meet a few good men and to straighten, your, to straighten you out, you know. Because what happened to me when I was little, I'm lucky I didn't end up a savage. Yeah, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.